Welcome to Supportive Excavation Part 2. In Part 2, we look at two advanced techniques for supporting excavations. They are secant pile walls, and that's illustrated here in this photo. This is a very deep and wide excavation in Lower Manhattan for the construction of a new subway terminal. The second method are slurry walls and we go back with a little history of the use of slurry walls at the World Trade Center and then we move into current applications including the details of how slurry walls are built and uh, why the slurry wall process works. The first method in this class is secant pile walls. They are an excellent uh, tool, rather quickly uh, built. The systems are very strong and watertight and extremely robust. You begin by installing a drilled shaft, which is nothing more than a hole in the ground filled with concrete. You skip a space and then you drill the next drill shaft and fill it with concrete and then you continue with the third and you can do this for the full length of the wall or for some uh, practical uh, distance. When the concrete is set you return to drill the intermediate holes. The first holes are called the primary holes and the intermediate holes are called the secondary holes. It's a real challenge to keep that secondary hole in place and aligned with the primary holes. If you've had uh, any experience drilling holes, uh, even uh, as a homeowner, you you know that the drill will want to skip away from those two hardened shafts and find the soft material and drill through the soft material. So how do you lock that secondary hole in place? How do you fix that location and keep it in that location for the full length of the drilling. You begin by starting with a very heavy low center of gravity drill rig and that kind of rig is illustrated here. Because of the massive weight of uh, this rig, this upper connection can be considered as a fixed point. The, the drill will be held in, in place and will not move. So now the challenge is at the point of entry, at the point of the drill, this is the point where the drill will want to escape and drill into the soft material. So how do you lock this in place and hold this in place for the full length of the drilling? You do this by constructing a starter wall, which is also called a guide wall because it guides the location of that drill. Here you can see a series of metal forms. There's uh, one on each side. And you can see how they're configured to create that precise overlapping pattern of the drilled holes. Now of course here you're looking at the form so you need to fill the space behind the form with concrete and when the concrete is set you dismantle the forms and remove them and now you've created a concrete wall with that perfect scallop shape. That guides the location of the uh, drill bit and 
keeps it in place for the full length of the drilling. There is a practical limitation and I believe 90 feet is considered a reasonable limit for the length of these drilled shafts. It's impossible to ensure that each shaft is 100 percent plumb. So to allow for some small amount of out of plumbness you should limit the height to 90 feet. Within that height they will always be in intimate contact. I wanted to show you this slide. People are still making wood forms. You don't really need to go to the factory and have a prefabricated metal form. When I began in this business all of the formwork was built on site out of wood and we created the most complex interesting shapes and of course they produced the most uh, interesting concrete end product. It was a real challenge for me to design wood forms to make them strong enough to carry the load of the concrete and very often they had these complex uh, shapes. So this was a wonderful engineering assignment and it also brought me in contact with the craftsmen that would build the forms and use the forms. Now over the years the industry has moved more and more to prefabricated metal forms the unfortunate result is that I think the designs have been dumbed down to use these very plain and simple forms. Uh, that's really unfortunate, but the skills are still there and engineers should not hesitate to make more demanding, more challenging shapes and the industry is still quite capable of making the formwork to create that finished product. I have two videos. One shows details of the primary hole and the second video shows details of the secondary hole.